Free Coaching February, round two. This is the Athletic Scholarship Podcast, episode number 132. Welcome to our second edition of Free Coaching February. I'm John Kubler, and this is the Athletic Scholarship Podcast. I'm an athletic scholarship coach, a dad of two scholarship athletes. I'm also the CEO of Recruit Me, a podcaster, a speaker, and also an author. I'm the author of the Athletic Scholarship Playbook, a complete college recruiting roadmap for high school athletes and parents. We're going to get to our playbook tip of the week right off the bat in a moment. Uh, This podcast, by the way, is 15 minutes that will change your scholarship future. So I dig in, I give you takeaways you can use immediately. Uh, You can find every episode on my website at recruitme.com, but it is easier on an app like the Apple Podcast app, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeart, and others. So take your pick. And uh, this is Free Coaching February. I got a bunch of questions in here, so I have to really move quickly. Thank you for not only your questions, but also your encouragement about this podcast. I I appreciate that. Any feedback I get, boy, I really take it to heart. I want to let you know that I've got the free recruiting power pack that many of you already have, but if you don't, uh, you got to go get it. It's a must for every high school family, high school sports family, and you get it uh, digitally. You just go to my website, recruitme.com, and download it. I've got the first steps to an athletic scholarship, I've got when and how to use video and also a player profile or resume template. Those three things are yours. Just go to recruitme.com and be sure to check out recruitme 3.0 at recruitme.com slash system. It's the new Recruit Me Athletic Scholarship System. Uh, Let's get into the playbook tip of the week. I take one thing out of the athletic scholarship playbook and just drill home with this. And this is it from page 31. I believe the entire recruiting process should be a family affair as much as possible. Spending a few hours together on the internet and on the road is a way to make it a family process. It assures that you're all getting the same information. It leads to better discussion and wise decisions. Check out the Athletic Scholarship Playbook on Amazon in your favorite format, whether it be digital or if you want it in print, you can have it or audible. It's all right there. Hey, um, I've got four questions to deal with uh, on this episode. uh, And thank you. If you do have a recruiting question, we've got two more episodes to go this month that I'll be doing free coaching February. uh, And you can just email me at john at recruitme.com. John at RecruitMe.com. Brent uh, sends this first question. He says, I was re-listening to episode 121 about recruiting shortcuts, and he talked about visiting schools, and here's my question. How should an athlete approach a coach that they're coming to visit their school? Uh, Do they send video and info ahead of time before a meeting? Uh, When is the best uh, time to visit? And overall, what pre-work needs to be done before an official visit? Good question, and I highly or what pre-work should be done before an unofficial visit, I highly recommend taking unofficial visits. You showing up at a school, and that speaks volumes to a coach. It shows that you are interested. You got to remember, they get a lot of emails. They get a lot of even a few letters these days. They get some phone calls. But how many visits does a coach get from an athlete who takes the initiative and says, we're coming at our own expense? Well, that shows them that you're interested. Um, So a number of questions within this, how should an athlete approach a coach and letting the coach know that they're coming? And I would just, uh, what you want to do is set up an appointment with the coach there. So somehow you got to get an appointment with the coach or the assistant coach, depending on the size of the program or the sport, and make sure that you're actually spending some time with one of the coaches, preferably the the head coach, if you can. So you may have to start with an email, go to a phone call, um, whatever it takes. It may take a while to get that weekend set up or that weekday set up that you're that you're visiting, visiting the school. Uh, be persistent. Now, another way is if you've already got the relationship going with the coach, then you're going to. That's much easier. You're going to just be able to contact the coach, and he or she would welcome your visit and spend time with you. Uh, So you got your cold call uh, or a relationship hasn't been built yet or another one where the relationship has been built and it's a lot easier to make that contact and set up the appointment. Uh, Go to the school, go through the campus tour, through the admissions office, 
spend time with the coach. If they're in season, watch practice. Um, so you, you just uh, you just got to go ahead and take that initiative and and use this opportunity, and then sit down and talk to the coach and ask the kind of questions that are going to be helpful for you. I've got an entire section in my book on what to ask a coach about different aspects of the program, school, uh, what what the dynamics are like, all that kind of stuff, financial. Uh, and I encourage you to to get the book and just read through that because there are specific things that you can ask the coach that shows him or her that you're on the ball. Um, then you also ask Brent uh, about sending a video and info ahead of time before a meeting. And ideally, yes, definitely you want to do that. Even if this is um, early in the relationship where you're meeting with the coach and they don't have much information, if hopefully they already got your profile and your letter and even the questionnaire filled out, and then the visit comes. If they don't have that, then you definitely want to get them the, the profile. You definitely want to get that intro letter to them. As far as a video, yeah, sure, that that wouldn't hurt at all. Send Send the video as well, but ask the coach first. Coach, would you like my video link? Yeah, and then you go ahead and send that link. When's the best time to visit? Whenever you can. <laughs> There's you you got to spread it out, I know, but anytime you can visit a coach on campus is is worthwhile. So hopefully that helps you out in answering that question. You ask what kind of pre-work needs to be done. Uh, you want to study the school. You want to uh, prepare your questions. Uh, you want to show up uh, really uh, with that time blocked out, the your time that you're going to tour the campus with the admissions office and campus tour and time you're going to have with the coach. So logistical things that you want to do to get ready. Know as much as you can about the program. Go in intelligently and showing them that you really are uh, interested in the school. Here's a uh, second question. This comes um, uh, from Rich, and he asks, uh, he paints this story. He says, my son is a high school junior and lacrosse goalie. Uh, since sophomore year, he's split time with another goalie uh, on JV. That goalie has since left the sport and has been the backup to a D1 committed upperclassman who's now a senior. The talented senior is a favorite of the head coach and will start uh, for the season, and my son will very likely uh, uh, see much time on varsity. As we send out our introductory packet to schools, how do we best word our introductory letter? Uh, Rich also says he also plays on a mid-level travel club team and does extremely well. But like JV, they don't keep statistics we can use. I do have video, but how can we craft letters? This is tricky for us. Oh, uh, great question, because I know a lot of athletes, talented athletes who can get an athletic scholarship because they're talented, don't get the playing time that they should. And that's a tough situation to begin. What I want to do is really encourage you to max out the travel club team that your your son is on, Rich. Uh, you got the video? Well, put your video together based on that. Um, you've got to come up with some sort of stats, even if you have to keep them yourself. That's really important. Uh, how do you craft the letter to the coach? Just say, you know, my son is a junior. Um, he's playing behind a, a D1 committed uh, senior, and he's looking forward to uh, competing uh, and starting next year. That's, well, you want to say that as an athlete. Here I'm saying, say about your son. No, Rich, your son needs to write the letter, but this is, you, you, you get what I'm talking about here. Be real positive and looking ahead to the next season and then, then really zero in on the achievements and showcasing your talent on the club level. Uh, there's no cut and dry answer to this, but you've got to be able to craft it in such a way that it's true, but it's positive and accurately shows uh, your son's talent. Of course, you may have a hard time on a D1 level, but look at D2, D3, uh, some great programs out there and schools that could be the best fit. Here's a really cool question. I really like this because uh, I know that other football families are asking this. How do high school football players get star rated? Rick asked that question. And uh, so 
I wanted to give you some real solid information on this. Um, ESPN and Rivals does star ratings, and ratings range from two stars to five stars, <laughs> um, which uh, is interesting. What happened to the one star? Uh, but what I thought I would do here is um, kind of share a little bit about that um, uh, that rating system and how that how that plays out and what that really means. Um, the even before I do that, I want to put it in in perspective as to what um, percentage how many how many athletes get star rated. And we're looking at football here, and of all the seniors uh, in, in playing football, high school football, uh, here are here are NCAA statistics, and this is uh, actually from Rivals uh, in class of 2018 data that how many athletes of the high school graduating athletes. In football, what will their star rating be? Five stars, 30 athletes, 30 football players. This is nationwide. Four stars, 380. It goes up to uh, 1,300 for three stars and over 1,800 for two stars. Now, that leaves how many unrated football players? That that leaves 296,000 Four hundred or ninety-eight point eight eight percent of the class, <laughs> and so the NCAA put these stats. Put these. Uh, the stats were available on Rivals, but NCAA interpreted them and and gave us these figures. So I wanted to let you know that even if you're not star rated football player and you're talented, there still is a place for you if you can compete at the next level. So don't be encouraged or discouraged if you're not a star rated athlete. And that is, uh, you know, the question was, how do you get star rated? Well, you got to be spotted by um, the scouts and be rated by ESPN or rivals and get your star rating. Um, if, if you want to go more detail about that, I would just welcome any uh, football families who have gone through this experience that want to share your experience uh, that I could share with folks on this show. But I thought I'd just kind of give you a glimpse. The, the star rating is, is nice, but it's not absolute when it comes to getting an athletic scholarship. Don't get dis discouraged if you're not star rated. Okay, one more question in here. And uh, this one comes uh, from Wendy. She says, uh, where do we get an honest opinion or evaluation of my son's ability so we know if we should be looking at D1, D2, or D3 schools? Oh, Wendy, I like that question because you're saying what's realistic? Uh, as parents, we have a tendency to either overrate or underrate our son or daughter's athletic ability. Either we think they're better than they are, or we don't realize they're as good as they are. And the reason for that is, man, we are, we're biased. We're biased. You need to get an unbiased opinion of your athlete's talent level. Uh, for us, I know, and, and I got to tell you, it might be painful. It might be painful because you may, if you're thinking higher of your athlete's ability than he or she is realistically, it, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. But let's keep the, the final goal in mind. You want the school with the best fit. You want your son or daughter to compete at a school and in a program where they really are going to compete and not sit. For us, we knew a, a college coach locally, and he was able to infect a couple of them able to give us uh, an opinion. We went to some camps, able to get some great evaluations there. And that really is where I would uh, instruct you to go. If you know somebody locally who has seen your son or daughter compete, uh, a college coach, because you really want to know what the college coaches think, not what everybody else thinks, 
Uh, you may even know someone who does consulting or recruiting uh, with families and can give you an honest opinion as long as they're not using that just to get your business. But if, if they are one involved in recruiting and has a, has a good scope of athletes that they've seen and know where your son or daughter fits in, that's a good place to go. But I would highly recommend attending a camp or two where you can get an honest opinion and honest feedback from a coach or the coaches there and say, coach, we really want to know. We really want to know where you think my son can compete or my daughter can compete. Is it D1? Is it D2 or D3? Please let us know. Once you have that, man, that just opens up possibilities because you're not wasting your time. You're able to zero in on the, the programs that are the right fit as far as talent level. And that's just one of the things that you want to look at as far as schools being right fit. Well, those are the four questions I got this week. And uh, if you have follow-up question to that, go ahead and shoot that to me. Or if you have your own question, please go ahead and send it to john at recruitme.com. And I'll make sure that uh, I answer your question on this show. Um, Now, I'm looking forward to a special edition, a special episode of the Athletic Scholarship Podcast called Equipped for Life. I didn't know if I'd get it done this week. I'm not finished with it. But in the next week, you're going to get two episodes. You're going to get the free coaching February, but also equipped for life. That's all I'll say about it right now. And uh, I'll leave you with that so I can go ahead. And uh, it's Monday night as I'm recording this. I want to bring it up right to the end, right to the last deadline of getting questions in and uh, be able to put this out on Tuesday. So I'll talk to you next Tuesday.